sticking with us. Um, we're all back here still, uh, myself, Michael and Roy. And uh, Roy, I think you've got another a topic to start us off with that uh, hopefully well, we can have some Linux, input. Linux 3 has come out and Linux 3.1 has been talked about. So we have this really fairly exciting thing on the 20th anniversary of Linux. Uh, I think that I think actually the third, the twentieth anniversary of Linux is officially sometime next sometime next month. I believe the announcement was in August of of nineteen ninety one, uh, and that's pretty important for any person who uh, who was looking forward to a version bump because that's the first time I believe in eight years that the basic uh, that, that the first two numbers of the version number in Linux has actually, have actually changed. Uh, so that's that's pretty major news. Uh, 3.1 is supposed to have some support for the uh, for the Wiimote. Uh, that's an interesting one, and I think the existing version has support for the Kinect. If anybody is interested in that, that's uh, that's one bit of news. I wonder uh, if you have. Uh, yeah. My, Michael, you're the guest. Is there anything uh, that you would like to add? It's, uh, it's it's that. Re- on that, I know little about kernel development, and so yeah, it's gone to three. I, I was curious what was going on with that. It looks like it's pretty much one of those things, well, it's time to go ahead and, and update the number. Um, the 20th anniversary is a good time to sort of bring some publicity, and I think that's fine. That's mm-hmm. but it's. I think I, it's all to do with the age of Linus, because he, uh, he turned 40 recently, and he didn't really want to have 2.6.40. Uh, he thought it was, that, that was his kind of joke or slash excuse. Or maybe there so, is some so, so I'm older than he is. I don't think I'm as influential. Just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> any any other releases, um, Roy, that you wanted to mention? Well, uh, one thing I was I was just going to uh, mention in general is I had a discussion with Michael yesterday about the fact that we have to distinguish between Linux and between the uh, what we consider to be uh, complete distributions of a desktop environment. So uh, one of the the, the the successes, of course, of Linux when people tend to not think about it these days is, is Android. So Android is based on Linux. Of course, you have WebOS based on Linux and TomTom is based on Linux. And lots of things are based on Linux these days, especially in mobile devices and in servers. Uh, but one of them is Android. And of course, Android is doing extremely well in, uh, in tablets and in uh, phones alike. So one of the other disagreements or debates that I had with, with Michael before, and I think it's generally important for, to speak about this for the sake of Linux, is the tablets market, uh, which is mostly dominated by Apple and has been dominated by Apple for the past year, uh, is basically being filled now with Linux-based uh, solutions. Uh, loads of different OEMs are trying to be first to the uh, to the punch. Uh, there is Motorola and Acer and Dell and so on, uh, trying to put their tablets inside this this market, a very fast-growing market, which grows even at the expense of the desktop to an extent. Um, and, and of course, this contains the Linux kernel. So, uh, one of the statistics I saw, three, four, three sources so far, is that the market share of Linux in tablets is 30%. Uh, and I believe that Michael was con- contesting this, uh, this statistic. So Can I just clear something up for the, for the listeners? It may well be that, uh, many people haven't, um, haven't come across Michael's site yet. And, uh, the purpose of this discussion today, um, we're certainly not suggesting that Michael has any affiliation with Apple other than the fact that he uses the products and obviously has a few good words to say about Apple and and many other uh, different systems. So this isn't a challenge of uh, Linux v. Apple and Mike, Michael is representative of Apple. Um, this is Michael's views and uh, obviously I just thought I'd say that, Michael, before we go over to you and get your take on. So, to be honest, I don't really remember the the market share numbers I have seen, but I don't think market share is really a good way of looking at success here. I th- how do you, how do you measure market share? Well, you have to define what market share. I agree with you. You have to define what market share is. Is it money? Is it number of distributions? Is it the uh, number of actual users? Because sometimes several users are using the same computer, uh, so we have to define what market share is. So, for me, the way you rate how good is an operating system or how good is a, is a system of any sort is, well, there's there's two ways. One, how well is it doing for the business if you're talking about a business making money? Because if they're not making money on it, it's going to wither and die. Yeah. But the yeah. more important one is how much is it serving users well? Yeah. And yeah, so if you look at satisfaction ratings... Yeah. Which correlates I, with sales. Android does yeah. well, too. It's, it's yeah. not caught up with iOS... 
but it's catch up. Satisfa- satisfaction correlates with sales usually. Uh, well, there's other. I mean, Mac, Mac has much higher satisfaction ratings than Windows on average. But you know, if you go to buy a Mac, I just had had a friend go to buy a Mac, and they're like, "Oh my goodness! By the time I get everything I want, you're looking at fifteen hundred dollars and up." So, so satisfaction isn't going. You, know, you can get a PC for a third of that and be happy with it. So, so there's other things that are going to go on, and, and there's marketing, and there's inertia, there's there's all sorts of stuff that goes in with it. But how satisfied are the users? And frankly, Android, I haven't used it much, but I think it is wonderful. Apple pretty much came in and redefined the smartphone market, and later on redefined the tablet market, and now there's people competing with them. Well, good wow. for yeah. good for everybody. Can you uh, tell me what exactly they innovated with the iPhone specifically? So here, here's an example. Here's an example of that. So I teach face-to-face. I, I used to. I don't teach many anymore. Yeah. But I used to teach face-to-face classes with fairly large numbers of people. In the beginning mm-hmm. of class, I would go through and I'd ask everybody to turn off their phone. And it would be 10 minutes of fighting with their phones to figure it out. I mean, it would literally be minutes of, well, how do I turn this thing off? I don't. I can't use it. It has all of these features, but I just don't know how to use them. And then the iPhone came out, and people with iPhones said, oh, it's done. And people in the class would be looking, well, how the heck did you do that? Apple didn't bring in that many new features. They may have a consolidated voicemail that may have been done before. I don't know. But what they brought was Apple has a focus on ease of use that is second to none in the industry. And they screw it up at times. But they have a, a focus that they usually get very, they do very well. And they got people to be able to use these features on their phones. They, and with the tablet, same idea. The tablet that Apple has is not going to compete with a Windows tablet as far as number of features. But the features that are there are easy to use. They're integrated with each other. And so you learn one program and for the most part, you've learned them all. You know, there's third party stuff and, and some of those go against the, the guidelines. But for the most part, you learn it and you've learned it. And that's what Apple brought to it. It's very hard to quantify these things. Uh, I mean, I, I personally, I'll just say very quickly, I'm still using a Palm uh, PDA, uh, and all those things you mentioned are very, very easy to do on that, too. And the layout of the menus and everything is very similar to the iPhone, only the, the Palm thing goes like over almost 10 years before uh, the iPhone even existed. So I, I, I just always wonder to what extent we, uh, we have this uh, influence of, uh, I don't know, hype or something. I mean, I, I could just say in my classes, um, things have changed tremendously since the iPhone came out. And I'd say people with Android devices, I barely touched an, an Android phone. It's, yeah, I have five minutes of experience with it. I am far, far from knowledgeable on those. And actually, even the iPhone, I have an iPod. I don't even have an iPhone. But people now in classes, I say, turn off your phone, and I wait. 30 seconds to a minute and all the phones are turned off. It used to be minutes would go by and people helping each other. All of them use an iPhone. Well, the people using an iPhone and Android devices turn it off quickly and even other phones seem to have have picked up on this need over the last few years of let's not just cram features down on people, let's let's make them easy to use. And and Apple is what pushed me. When Apple came into the scene on, on phones, all sorts of people said it's a it's a mature market. They're not going to get into it. Other people have tried, and they had a product that just pleased people tremendously, and and pulled them into it. And Android's doing that now. I said I think Android, from the the tiny bit I know, still is struggling to to please people as much, and part of that is because Apple has their IP stuff, and they say you can't do it, and Apple is right, and some they're not. Yeah, yeah. usually I, I, I firmly believe, with, the, with certain exceptions, I, I believe people buy what they find to be good. In the case of Windows, one of the issues is that people don't actually buy Windows, uh, it's the OEMs who are buying, it's companies like Dell and HP who are buying Windows, and then imposing them on Windows if they want to buy the hardware, if you want to buy a motherboard, integrate